Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about the Bible. Let's just get into it. <laughs> so the Bible is so many things. The Bible is the living word of God. We see how it talks about the word is living and active. The Bible is this book we see <laughs> of everything God longs for his children to know and his creation to know. It's full of wisdom, guidance, knowledge. We see human nature. We see the promises of God that we have as Christians within its pages. We see God's truth. We see how things work in this world spiritually. We see how our spiritual adversary works in not only our lives, but others lives and in this world as a whole. We see so many answers of why things are the way they are. We see verses that offer us comfort and hope. We see within the pages um, the promise of a life to come in eternity. We see how God miraculously worked through people's lives, performed wonders and miracles. We see how people were struggling in dark circumstances and how God worked through them. We see how God turned things for good. We see a God of love. We also see a God of justice. And a God full of grace, full of love, full of mercy, and seeing his people turn away from him. Time and time again, you see a God that never stopped pursuing after his people. We see the way God designed things spiritually. We see God's original design <coughs> of how he created this world. We say how the enemy, Satan, um, how he tries to work in our lives and how he tempted out of me even in the fall of sin and how the entire course of the humanity was changed forever. But in that, we also see the amazing redemption plan that God had to reconcile people to himself. We see um, the prophesying and the foreshadowing in Christophanies of Jesus, a savior that would come to redeem humanity from the curse of the law and sin that Satan had brought us into. We see verses that we can speak at the enemy that are so powerful, that are not just words on a page, but it is the living word of God. And when we speak certain verses, the peace that it can bring to us and in our lives, as we're reminded God is with us through everything, and we're reminded the wonders of what he can do in our lives when we feel like we have no strength or something feels beyond what we can address in our lives. We see scriptures and, and verses that 
we can speak that can create shifts in our lives because of the spiritual power that his word carries. And it truly is the sword of the spirit when the enemy is trying to feed us lies, trying to bring us into fear, trying to bring us into anxiety. We see how Christianity is set up. We see how the enemy has tried to infiltrate it and what he's tried to turn it into compared to what God has designed it to. Be. We see the greatest love story within these pages of a God that came in the flesh lived the perfect life we could. Died on the cross for our sins, poured out his precious blood for his very own creation, and redeemed us as his children, and offers us the free gift of eternal life, but not just that, but knowing relationship with him. that we would look to him to lead and guide us. That we're reminded who he is. We're reminded the truth of his promises. Of a God who washed people go after idols, worship other gods. Um, we also see wickedness and violence within the Bible of different things that people did. We see the, the darkness and the brokenness of humanity's sinfulness. But within it, we see the grace and redemption that God can bring to the most broken pieces of people's lives. A God that longs for us to come to him, to truly know who he is. You know, the Bible says it in Jeremiah, you will find me. You shall seek me, you shall find me. When you seek me with all your heart. But the amazing thing is that God is the one that seeks us, that pursues us all the days of our lives with all his heart. Constantly drawing us near to him. That we would know the truth of his heart and his real nature. And that we would be in relationship with him too. And so, the Bible is so many different things. I don't even think enough words can describe the magnitude of, of what the Bible is. But it was an amazing, amazing story. Absolutely incredible, incredible book. It has so many things, but it's absolutely incredible. And so, um, one thing I really wanted to share on this channel is <laughs> part of me 
being okay in my life kind of after everything I've been through. The reason I can even share these videos was seeing scripture, reading about God's rescue, his shelter, his faithfulness, and the hope it brings and the hope it started to ignite in me. You know, we can go through so many things in this life, darkness, pain, where it can feel like God is not with us, where he has left us. Or like we're not going to be okay. And it's often those moments where fear and anxiety try to take over. They feel like they're going to engulf us. And I remember, um, I remember laying down and just struggling. Um, I had been going through really dark depression. Um, and I think at that time it was when I was hearing voices and they were very dark. Um, you know, they were trying to get me to give up on my life. Um, and my mind was just pounding with doubt at that time. And I had so much anxiety and I just, I felt terrified. And I remember opening up the Bible because I, I realized God was the only person that could help me through that time. I didn't know what to do. I felt like nothing was working. Nothing was helping me feel better. And I was just miserable. And it was very difficult. And it was like all I felt and all I could see was darkness. I felt like I couldn't see anything. I felt like there was no hope. I felt like things would never get better. I felt like I would never get through all of that. And I believed that um, somehow, you know, God would make things better. But when it felt like nothing was getting better, nothing was changing for years, I didn't know what to believe. Everything was completely overwhelming. And I remember opening up my Bible, trying to read it. And I remember I came across the verse, um, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. I remember reading that. And I remember it felt like the furthest thing from the truth. But it gave me hope. Reminding me that even though it felt like God had left me, it was completely far away, or that God couldn't see my situation, or that maybe somehow, before I truly knew who my God is, that somehow this situation would overtake me, this circumstance was somehow too broken or too dark, or too difficult, that either God didn't want to work in that situation, or maybe, maybe somehow it was too broken, or I felt like I was beyond what could be fixed. what could be restored or wondered and questioned if um, I was being punished by God. And maybe he didn't want to help my situation or that he had a lot of other things in the world that were so much worse than what I was going through. That what I was going through seemed rather trivial to some of the violence and destruction and dark things that happen in this world and some of the suffering and pain that exists. But these were all the ways I kind of used to view God. For a long time, I'd been really um, pretty scared to open up the Bible, truthfully. Um, especially when I was younger, I would always seem to come across verses that seemed to confirm the very fears that I had. Now, I really struggled with religious bondage and viewing God in a certain way when I was young. Um, 
you know, for quite a long time, and it started happening when I was pretty young. <laughs> but I didn't really know who God was, just from what I had learned or how he perceived him to be, or based on what my life experiences had been, or what I could understand with my finite childlike mind by what I would read in the Bible. <laughs> hold on, I'm going to... Turn this fan off. It's really kind of making me hold. Hold on. There we go. Okay. I'm going to try to maybe lean back too, so I'm not like leaning forward to the laptop. Hopefully, you can hear me though if I like sit right here. So as I mentioned, um, I was kind of scared to open up the Bible that that evening, that night, because who I perceived God to be, and because I thought I would run across a verse that would just make me feel more fear, make me feel even more like God was punishing me, make me feel even more anxious. And I know for some people that, and even me still today, this can be something that we wrestle with when it comes to the Bible. But contrary to what I believed I would end up seeing when I opened this book, instead I came across that verse. And I don't even think that's what it says in the KJV, but that's what a lot of Bibles write it as. Um, but when I came across that verse, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. It was the only bit of hope that I had to cling on to. And it gave me comfort that God was with me. Even if I couldn't see him, even if that felt like my situation wasn't changing, even if that felt like I was drowning and I didn't know how I was going to make it through that. That he was with me still. And as I was reading that, I was somehow trying to believe that even if it was just a glimpse of hope trying to believe that he was with me that he had not left me that somehow by his strength I was going to get through this and so there's another time when I was in my room and because that became a huge scripture for me I was in my room, and I would put different Bible verses on my, like, memo board shadow box thing. Um, I had, like, a shadow box at one time um, where I'd put scriptures on and then kind of close the case. But um, one time, I was absolutely struggling, and I just felt this wave of fear just crash over me. And I have felt terrified. And I felt all this anxiety. And it was like, what if um, I'm not going to be okay? I don't know how much longer I can um, take this. What if something bad is going to happen to me? I felt like my mind had completely slipped out of my control. And there was nothing I could do about it. That's how I felt. But as I was sitting there, feeling this huge wave of fear and anxiety. I felt like I just could not get through the moment. I remember right in that moment, 
I looked over and I saw that first. And it said, when you go through the waters, I will be with you. And I remember right as I was looking at that verse, I had this thought come to mind. And it wasn't not only that God was with me. When I go through deep waters, but it was this idea that, in truth, that God was holding me secure in his arms as I go through deep waters. And that he is the one walking on those waters. Even if they feel like they stretch on for miles and miles. And I don't know how long I'm going to go through this, go through that time that I was in in my life. He is holding me secure through all of it. And that was so powerful for not only that scripture to meet me in that moment, but that truth to sink into my heart and my spirit that I needed to be reminded of. And as I was thinking on that and meditating on that, I felt that fear and anxiety start to fade. And it was scriptures like these that ignited hope in me. And as it would grow my faith to believe God was with me, and eventually to believe that he was fighting my battles, and this increased my hope that I was going to be okay. And there was someone helping, a greater power, when it felt like all my strength was gone and everything was beyond what I could make better. And the peace that his word and his truth, no matter what the situation or circumstance looked like, the peace that I brought to my troubled mind and anxious heart, even in the midst of that darkest and longest storm. And this makes sense as I look back on it, because it goes back to faith. And the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so, as I was reading those verses, as I was being reminded of that truth, even in the midst of what I was going through, before I had seen the other side. Before, it looked almost impossible to get out of what I was going through. Before, people spoke things over my life that that was what my life was going to be. Before, the, the doubt ceased in my mind and there was no certainty everything was completely unknown and I felt like everything was just pitch black and I couldn't see anything and there was no light as I was reading his word as I was being reminded of these scriptures, it was growing my faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's by his word, as we hear his word, as we read his word, that faith comes. and essentially grows inside us. And rises within us. 
And what is faith? The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. And what I come back to when it comes to this is, oh, my back's getting a little stiff. Our hope is our faith. And I think you can say vice versa. Um, our faith is our hope. <laughs> But faith comes from our hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And then I started thinking about um, without hope, there would be no faith. But I also believe if we flip that statement that without faith, there would be no hope. It is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. The evidence is things unseen what we can't see. And so all this has been really, really huge in my walk with God from that time in my life that lasted for many years, all the way to where I am now, and understanding God's word in that way. And I want to tell that to any of you that um, if you're reading God's word and it's making you feel anxious or afraid, I know there can be some really challenging passages in there, but I want you to understand when you read scriptures, part of why we have the word, why God may appear to the Bible, is that we would have scriptures to bring us peace, to bring us comfort in the midst of the trials and dark circumstances and pain that we go through in this life. That if we have seemingly nothing else to hold on to, that we could cling on to his word, his hope, his promises. In the midst of our situations and circumstances. Um, because sometimes we have times in our life where we don't feel God. or we're going through pain, or it feels like your mind has literally imprisoned you, and you don't know how to break free. And this is something I've experienced where we can't go by our feelings, we can't necessarily go by what we're experiencing. Because not only will our, our emotions lie to us, our eyes can even deceive us sometimes. And the enemy, he wants to bring lies, he wants to bring fear, he wants to bring anxiety and make you feel like you're not gonna get through things. And he wants to try to steal our peace and our hope. And that's why it's so important that we go by his word, not only to know who he is, but that his words would bring us comfort, solace, peace. Because life does get really difficult and dark sometimes. And so, um, when you're reading scripture, specifically when it comes to meditating on the word of God and taking in those words and your mind being renewed, a huge part of that is um, it bringing you peace and comfort, reminding you God is with you, reminding you that he goes before you, reminding you that he is fighting your battles, reminding you of his eternal presence, 
reminding you of this power of his strength, reminding you of eternity. Reminding you he can work through your situation. Reminding you he's holding you secure throughout everything. And that's why, you know, I, I talk so much about the things I do because sometimes when you read certain things in the Bible, we may not experience that. <laughs> but sometimes when we've been taught to be God from a certain lens, for example, if we don't know what the gospel really is, and we don't know how Jesus says, you know, no man shall pluck his sheep out of his hands, that our salvation is secure in him. Then when we read certain verses, we may feel some comfort. But if we don't even know our secure, our eternity is secure, that we don't have to fear that day. Uh, maybe there's nothing to fear with God because we know the one who holds us secure all the days of our life. Then when we read certain promises, such as when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. If we don't know our, our eternity is secure, then it can create confusion where it's like, yes, God, you are with me in the midst of this, but um, I may or may not go to heaven. And that's where I was for a really long time. And so that's why it's so important to know God's heart and his love and his nature. And that when you have put all your faith in Christ, your eternity is secure. It's in Jesus' hands. And his hands are holding on to us every day of our lives. And no one can pluck you out of his hands. Okay. When we read about the promises of God in the Bible, the Bible says all his promises are yes and amen. When you read about the promises of God in the Bible, we're not just reading certain promises that were to the people that we read about in the Bible that are written from a long time ago. What you're reading are the very words of God, the very words that God speaks to you, is very hard for you. When you read, for example, Jeremiah I think it's yeah it's Jeremiah 30 verse 17 and that says for I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds saith the Lord because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is I in whom no man seeketh after. When you read this, you're not just reading about people within the Bible. And God was saying that too. You're reading God's love for you, His heart for you, His promise for you. That's what He's saying to you as you take this in and you receive this promise and take it in His words and believe Him. You are taking in Him. Showing you flowers for health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. And I encourage you when you read the word of God. That's what's so amazing, you know, it's, it's made for all of creation. It wasn't just written for people back in Bible times, but for all of his creation. That we would take in his word, that we would take in his promises, that we would receive his free gift of eternal life, that we would be in relationship with him and walk with our Heavenly Father all the days of our life. But when you read his promises, you are reading what he has promised you to, and I encourage you to take that in. 
God wants you to take that in, that it would give you hope, that it would give you comfort. And it goes back to that verse on faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. And that hope is built upon his promises. But especially, the Bible says, talks about faith, hope, and love. And it says, Excuse me. Okay, I'm just gonna have to look it up. It comes from First Corinthians thirteen thirteen. And it says and now abideth faith, hope, charity, or love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So our hope is built upon God's word and his promises. But what are his promises built upon, his word built upon? And ultimately our hope. If our hope and faith are built upon his word and his promises, our hope based off the promises of God and his word, what is built upon or is meant to be built upon is his love. And what does that mean? means understanding God's love for you, believing he loves you, believing that he can work all things for good in your life because he loves you, believing that he loves you, that he's fighting for you, that he wants to help you, that he can bring redemption and restoration and healing to that situation, that circumstance, that most broken part of your life, or maybe all of it feels broken, that he can work it for good. So I wanna encourage you to take in God's word, take in his promises. And what I love doing is really reflecting on scripture as much as I can. So I have the Bible that I spend time with day to day, but putting scripture in your room, um, having it on your phone. Um, I even have a journal full of scripture where I will print out, um, Verses and I will print out Christian quotes so I can look over that journal and I'll kind of make them for different seasons and I can just be saturated in truth regardless of what lies the enemy is trying to tell me regardless of what the circumstance looks like as I'm reminded and the Bible says we walk by faith 
na paistay. And so I encourage you to find verses based on what you may be going through um, to remind you who who God is and that he is for you and he is holding you secure throughout everything. Um, I feel the verse from Isaiah coming up, so I want to share it. I think this is the one that I had come across a lot in my life. Um, um, I believe this is the one that um, I put on my um, bulletin board. Um, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. But this is what the KJV version says, and I just feel um, kind of a prompting in my spirit to share it with you. And it says this, But now that the saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I redeem thee, I have called thee by name thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Okay. I'm getting a little bit cold. <laughs> my dog blanket. So I encourage you to um, find different verses um, that you can take in based on what you may be going through um, and just reflect on them, meditate on them, take them in every word and believe that God is speaking that to you as a promise that he has for you. That you can receive. Okay, so the next kind of aspects I wanted to talk about within the Bible. Um, I just want to say there's so much within the Bible that, um, you know, I can't wrap my head around. I don't completely understand everything in the Bible. I'm pretty sure almost every single Christian on the face of this earth um, can't either. Like, I pretty much guarantee that even people that know the Bible forward, backward, inside out, or have had theological um, training, um, teaching, I'm pretty sure every single person can say that they don't know why certain things are in the Bible, or there are certain things they don't understand, or, you know, we don't know everything as Christians. I know I can definitely say that. What I have learned when I was reading the Bible, there are certain things that, when you have repeated phrases, um, and you notice patterns, you can deduce what it's referring to as you kind of start noticing those patterns and those connections and connecting different verses. Um, for example, I mentioned when we see death repeated, um, I started kind of understanding. Um, I'm like, oh, this might be referring to the law and how the law doesn't say it. And then um, I would have that verse come to mind for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is the eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And as that verse came up, I started kind of putting those pieces together and was able to understand, hey, when we see death in the Bible, not every single time, but specifically when it's talking about the law in some capacity or rules, or it's most likely referring to the law. So there can be a lot of symbolism within the Bible. Um, there's a lot of patterns, a lot of connections when you see what certain verses say and you see that word repeated you can go to those other verses and see how they're connected that's why the more we know of the word the more those scriptures will come up um and we'll have more understanding but i definitely recommend when you read the bible 
where you open it and you just allow God to lean you and guide you and help you understand. Because there can be a lot of tricky passages that we come across. And I believe the Bible is meant to be hard to understand because there are certain things that can only be kind of understood by his spirit guiding us. And also, it's so important that we have put all our faith in Christ, um, trusting in him, um, that we receive the Holy Spirit so he can help us understand. Because he also helps us understand when we hear false teachings in Christianity and things, he is one that leads us into all truth. As the Bible says, the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. And as says, and for Sean, you know, you need that, not that any man teach you because he teaches us all things. He helps us understand his word. And when we see in Proverbs 3, 5, trust the Lord with all thine heart, lean not on thine own understanding. I think it's very, very helpful for us not to lean on our own understanding of what we think certain passages are saying, but we're, like I said, we're letting him lead us and guide us and just help us understand. Um, but yeah, but there can definitely be tricky passages within the Bible, um, for anyone that has a hard time reading the Bible, totally, totally, totally understand. I totally understand. Um, I have had quite a bit of trouble in the past because there are a lot of passages I don't understand. Or you read about God's wrath and you're not understanding context of people committing evil and God trying to bring justice. But with that being said, I definitely understand how that can be. Um, that's why I said it's really important not to go by your own understanding or even what you may have heard of certain passages because people in Christianity can twist passages all the time and it will feel and seem right to you. But that doesn't mean that every interpretation that we hear in Christianity of Bible verses is how it was meant to be written or the meaning of it the real meaning of you know what it is meant to be and I just want to say that but But if you struggle with that, I definitely recommend um, starting off with like the book of Psalms, especially if you're going through a harder dark time and you're like, God will lead me to Psalms a lot. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, David, one of the main psalmists, you know, he writes these absolutely beautiful poems, but they're so, um, they're so raw and honest. Um, it's amazing. He brings everything that he feels to God. Um, just absolutely amazing. Um, David was literally running from his enemies um, that were literally trying to kill him. And so I really believe, you know, he was just alone with God and he literally had no one, like, for the most part in his life at one time. And so he rips, he's amazing. Um, heartfelt psalms of what he was going through but we also get to see the very things jesus felt within the psalms as well because a lot of psalms are prophesying everything that jesus would go through so it's really amazing to see that um yeah just they're they're, they're very beautiful they're very incredible i definitely recommend um reading the psalms and they're quite a bit shorter, so you can really go verse by verse, and they're more easily able to be digested. I feel like the Psalms are more an expression of um, what David and other psalmists were more feeling emotionally, and the Psalms can be very, very comforting. Um, but some other books of the Bible are more like stories that can be kind of hard to connect all the pieces.
but I feel like Psalms is a really, really good place to start or a book to go to if you struggle with reading the Bible. But we also get to see within everything David was going through, um, how he would praise God. Um, and I just think that's so huge for us to have that reminder and to have those um, amazing Psalms that David wrote. So I also really, really recommend Ephesians. Ephesians is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's one of my favorite books. Um, and it shows us um, how God sees us, how he loves us, um, the blessings that we have through Christ. Um, I think Ephesians is incredible. It's a book a lot about God's love. Um, we also see like how to put on the armor of God or how to deal with spiritual warfare and false gospels and false teachings within the book of Ephesians. So I definitely recommend the book of Ephesians. Um, Galatians is also really, really good to understand the freedom that we have in Christ to understand um, the religious bondage that is happening. Not only that was happening within the Bible, but within Christianity as a whole. Um, I really, really like the book of Isaiah as well. Um, I think there's some really good verses in there, but that one can be kind of challenging just to kind of keep track of everything, at least for me. Um, but, um, and then I really, really mainly recommend, um, reading over Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels to really see, um, Jesus and who he is and, it's really amazing whenever I'm reading the Gospels, like I just, I feel so connected to Jesus and just seeing the miracles that he did and seeing his heart and his love and his compassion for people and um, seeing the things he has done in my life too. Um, man. Um, Hebrews is also really, really good. It talks a ton about faith and by faith and really breaking down, you know, so much of the Bible and what Jesus accomplished. And so those are some books that I really, really recommend if you do struggle to read the Bible or you're looking for um, different books to read. Okay. The last thing I want to mention when it comes to the Bible is um, how it is a weapon to the enemy. So the more scripture we know, the better when the enemy tries to feel lies or fear, we can quote scripture at him. I've mentioned this in many videos, but when I was really struggling in my life and the enemy was trying to feed me lies and tell me that I was destroyed, it looked like that from the outside and felt like that. Um, physically, I was like better and my heart was racing all the time. I could not even walk to classes. And everything in my life felt the short of the time um, from things I had been through. And really, years of spiritual warfare and things that the enemy, most of it was from him that he'd been trying to do in my life. And I started quoting a verse from Second Corinthians. Um, I don't have it completely memorized, but it talks about we are hard pressed on every side, perplexed but not in despair, um, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. And I started um, speaking that out loud when the enemy would make me feel like I was destroyed, when he would make me question, and that would come up in the form of of a question in my mind, you know, how are you going to get through this, or um, how are you going to do this for God? You know, all these different things started coming up, and when I was struggling to go to classes, and I, you know, started saying, you know, I am not destroyed, I am not destroyed, you know, his word says I am not destroyed, um, we are hard pressed on every side, I may be perplexed, but I'm not in despair. Um, and I am not destroyed, and I just I would start quoting and speaking that out loud. 
um, sometimes in my apartment, <laughs> but I'd start doing that. I'm not going to lie, the warfare ramped up a little bit after that happened because I don't think the enemy is happy that I was quoting that and starting to understand God's word has more power than your circumstance or situation that you're dealing with. And I got to see that like physically in front of my own eyes. Physically, I might have been feeling the way I was. But when I started speaking that word, because God's word is not just words on a page, it has power. The Bible is a spiritual book. So it's sort of the spirit's weapon to the enemy. So not only when he's trying to speak lies in your life, but when he's, when he's trying to do things in your life, when he's trying to bring different attacks into your life, whether it's physically, whether it's mentally, whether it's emotionally, spiritually, you name it. When you speak his word over your life, over yourself, and you speak it, to the enemy, he has to flee. We see that when Jesus is being tempted in the wilderness. But not only does he have to flee, but God's word has power. It's living and active. It's the living word of God. So as I spoke that verse, as I kind of pushed through the warfare ramping up a little bit, um, and stood in faith, and kept proclaiming that, my exhaustion started lifting off of me that I had been feeling. I stopped feeling so exhausted. So understand, God's word is also so powerful, where it caused a literal shift in my circumstance. Because it is a weapon to the enemy, because it's the sword of the spirit, because his word is power and it's living and active. Um, and I encourage you, one thing that I really love daily and that was really helpful, um, write down verses. I encourage you to type them out on your phone, just anywhere you can see them and kind of have them available, whether it's in a journal, whether it's on your phone, whether it's both. Type them out in your phone or where you can have. Um, you know, cards or flip through journal reminders where when you have nothing to do or you're bored or you want to look like you're on your phone, but you're not really, um, you can pull those verses out. You can just look over them. You can meditate on them, especially if you're going through something or you have to face a fear or something or I don't know, maybe you have to do a presentation or something and you have a lot of fear, anxiety, you know. You can meditate over the word and read over the word that the words will sink into your heart and spirit before you go do something that you're supposed to do that maybe makes you scared or you don't know how to do it and you can just be filled with all this peace and why you have that free time in your life or that time where you're not doing anything or you feel bored your mind can be renewed in his word um, especially if you don't have a lot of spare time to really, really, really kind of address things in your life, then that's one way where you can have time where not only is your mind being renewed, but it can be very calming. It can bring a lot of peace and a lot of stress relief for you too. And so I'm trying to figure out if there's anything else that I left out regarding kind of the Bible. We see, you know, different instructions within the Bible. I don't like to say the Bible is an instruction manual. I more like to think of it as um, a lifeline, um, a guide for life, um, all these different things. But there are different instructions God gives within the Bible that um, there are certain things he encourages us not to engage in um, that will be harmful for us. He writes down different um, instructions within Old Testament about like food. Some people have followed that and have watched their health really, really improve because there were certain foods that was laid on in the Old Testament that were causing them health issues and they stopped eating those foods and they went by those guidelines and their health improved. 
Um, so there's just many examples of different instructions within the Word of God, but it is, it is so many things. Um, it can just be so life changing, and if we get to see um, God's inheritance that He provides for His children, and the promises He wants us to know, and His heart for us, His love for us, and the life we have through Him and, and through His Word, and um, the life that we are meant to have through Jesus. Um, and so, I really hope this video helps you. I really hope it um, encourages you or brings you comfort um, and just shows you how incredible the Bible is because truly it is so incredible and this is coming from someone that since I was young I was very scared to read the Bible and I didn't know how, I didn't understand it, so I definitely understand that, um, but I encourage you to um, to open it up and to see it in all these ways because there's just there's so much wisdom and it's just it's so incredible um what an amazing amazing um, spiritual book like wow and we're so fortunate that we have his word um that, that we, we have Bibles that we can look at and man, that we can um, reflect on his promises and, and take in his word and come to know who he is and just full of so much wisdom for life and the hope of the life to come in eternity. And the last thing I want to show you is an app I've really, really, really been enjoying. And it's called Pray Daily KJV Bible. This will be really helpful if you want to get into a habit of spending time with God every day, spending time with His Word. What I love about this is when I'm at work and I have free time or I can be on my phone, um, or really anywhere, and I don't have my Bible with me, I can literally pull this up and you can tell I was reading The Prodigal Son, but I love it because I can copy and paste verses. I don't have to like Google search them anymore. Not fun, especially when I make YouTube notes, but I can literally copy and paste. I can highlight. It's just amazing. All on my phone, man. Um, but the only thing I don't like is I can't copy and paste large sections, so I can only copy and paste verses one at a time in my notes. So I wish that was different, but other than that, I mean, I've been enjoying this app so much. I think it's a really incredible, incredible, um, incredible app. But, um, yeah, I love it because... I have insights that come up when I'm, like I said, in a place where I don't have my Bible, or like at work, I literally, and I'm wondering, oh, what does the Bible say as those insights are coming up? And I'm reflecting on something that has kind of um, arisen in my spirit. I can literally go right to the book of the Bible um, and look at it, see what the word says, right as those insights are coming up. And that's just been so, so huge, and it just allows me to get in the Word a lot more um, just to end the day, which I love reflecting on the Word and understanding the Word and um, just reading it. So I've been loving that. But with this app, you get, you get prayers every morning and every night. And you can set those for specific times. Um, you get verses of the day. I think you get quite a few verses of the day. So that's kind of what that dashboard looks like. There's Bible trivia on here. There's different plans. You have an AI priest that you can literally talk to. Um, I probably won't be using that. You have Bible verses by topic on here. So. 
this might be Catholic app, I'm not sure. Um, but I think a lot of the devotions are really good because I don't know when it comes to the AI priest. <laughs> but um, it's really nice. Yeah. So there you go. There's some questions. I think you only have like five questions that you can ask maybe in a month or something if you have the free version. And then it's really cool. You can earn like rewards as you do prayers, as you do devotions, um, to kind of keep you motivated to stay in the habit. Um, there's my prayers. I really, really love this. Um, I wanted to design an app like this where people would like enter their moods. So I love that they've, um, at one point, I don't know how to design apps, but, um, I love this because you can literally check in how you're feeling and it will also like how you're feeling and then you can like write down your prayers and it reminds you to kind of tune into your emotions and um, you can bring those things to God. So I love that so, so much. And then you have different um, devotionals for the day of things that they will teach you that can be really, really, really really encouraging. So I, like I said, I've been loving this app. I think it's so cute. Um, I haven't been using it to like stay in habit when it comes to like the Bible. I've more been using it to look at the Bible when I don't have mine near me, but I think it's just so, 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 um, incredible. Like, I've been enjoying it so, 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 so much. I'm trying to think if there's anything I... Yeah, here's what you get if you get the actual premium. <laughs> but honestly, I think the free version is totally, totally worth it. Here's, like, different rewards you can get. I think as you play Bible trivia and possibly as you do different things, but... Um, then you kind of have this as you go through different Bible trivia, um, but it's really cool because you really get to take in the word and learn things and, um, all that good stuff. So apps like that have been really, really helpful for me when it comes to, um, kind of making a habit of the word and just having different things to encourage you. I've used mental health apps before to help deal with things, but I've always wanted something christian related that can really bring god into things because sometimes like apps can recommend things that are not christian related in terms of like meditation that's not um biblical and things like that and so i love that this app has really incorporated a lot of things into it encouragement devotional um bible verses checking in with your mood um i just think it's great <laughs> so I think I've said everything that there has been to be said about this topic that I can think of that I wanted to go into. Um, but I love you guys. I hope this video helps you. And welcome to any new subscribers. God bless you.